And now for question number 10 from the P1 Practice B paper, um, International A Level. The curve C has equation y equals minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. And um, the first part of the question is telling us to express the curve in the form y equals a x plus b in brackets all squared plus c where a b and c are constants to be found so here we have um, to basically complete the square for this expression here for the equation of the curve and then for part two we've got to either use that expression that we've made to write down the coordinates of the turning point of the curve or we can use a, a, another method and state whether it's a, a, the turning point is a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so let's start get started with part one of this question. So part one of the question, A part one, is telling us to express it in this form here. So we start off with y equals minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. Okay, now we want to write it in this complete the square form. Now, in order to do that, I need to have in front of the x squared a coefficient of just 1. I don't want this minus 2 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that minus 2 outside. I'm going to put like a square bracket. Okay. And then I'm going to just write inside here x squared. Now, if I expand, I'm going to get minus 2x squared. Now, I also want to do the same thing. For the x, I don't want to have, basically now I, I need to have the x squared and the x together. I don't care about the plus 8, I can write that at the end. So I'm going to close the bracket before the plus 8, but what I write here has to be the same as what's up here. So minus 2 times something gives me 6x, what is going to be minus 3x. Okay, so now this expression that I have is exactly the same as what's above, minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. But here I have inside this bracket, I have the x squared minus 3. I've got it in the form where I have just an x squared without anything else, without any coefficient with it except for 1, which is exactly what I need to start completing the square. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just this part of it here, and I'm going to complete the square for this. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, of course everything else is around it, but what I'll do is just to show you what I'm doing, I'll, I'll put that in like a square bracket. And I'll say, let me complete the square for this. So you have x minus, you've got to take a half of this coefficient. A half of this coefficient, which gives you 3 over 2. And then squared. Okay, so I've made the square bracket. However, this and this are not going to be the same. If I expand this, I'm going to get x squared. And I'm going to get minus 3x. And then I'm going to get plus 9 over 4. Because this last term will have, you know, it will be squared at the end. Okay, you'll have x minus 3 times x minus 3. You'll have a last term of plus 9 over 4. Well, I don't want the 9 over 4. So I've got to take away 9 over 4. So basically what you're doing is you're writing down a half of this coefficient without the x. You're squaring the bracket. Okay, if this is a minus, of course, that's a minus. And then you always take away the square of this number. Whether it's positive or negative, you always take it away. Because the last term will always be positive when you're squaring the bracket because you're going to have either minus 3 over 2 times minus 3 over 2 or plus 3 over 2 times plus 3 over 2. You know, in, in either case, you're going to get a positive last term, which we don't want because we only want to have x squared minus 3x. We don't want to have the, the plus 9 over 4 at the end, which this would produce, so we take that away. Okay, that's completing the squared, but we had the minus 2 in front of the bracket and we had the plus 8 at the end. Okay, so that's, everything is the same. If I was to expand this, it will give me exactly the same as this, which will be exactly the same as that. So every line here, everything is the same as it was in the beginning. And now we're almost there. Okay, we can just multiply by minus 2 these two terms. Of course, without expanding this bracket, otherwise we'd be going around in circles. The whole point is to produce something which is a squared bracket here. So minus 2 times that bracket, I'll just write minus 2 in front of it. And minus 2 times minus 9 over 4, which would be plus 9 over 2. Because 2 and the 4 cancel out. Okay. And then you've got your plus 8. Don't make the mistake of multiplying the minus 2 by the 8. Because I didn't take out the 2 from the 8 
as a fact from that, I only dealt with these two terms. I only dealt with these two terms with the minus two. The eta left separate. Okay, so now we can um, basically continue and complete the square. Let me just move this down a bit. So we can now um, basically add these two terms together. So you have y equals minus two times x minus three over two squared. And this is plus nine over two um, plus 16 over two. Remember, 8 is like 16 over 2. 8 is the same as 16 over 2. So 16 over 2 plus 9 over 2 is 25 over 2. Okay, so we've done, we've, we've completed it. Now, that's, that's the answer to part A. It says where A, B, and C are constants to be found, not integers, constants, that's fine. So we've got A is equal to minus 2, and B is equal to, let me see the form that they gave it to us in. They're all plus, plus, plus here, right? So B is negative then. So B is negative 3 over 2. And C is 25 over 2. So that's like minus 1.5. And that's like 12.5. Uh, okay. Then part 2 says, hence or otherwise. Okay, as we've discussed before, the word hence... Oops, the word hence, what's going on here? The word hence basically means using what we have just found. Okay, so we could use what we've just found, which would probably be the most sensible thing to do because we've already completed the square. Okay, um, or you could, if you want, another way to find the turning point, the turning point is a place where it turns, is you could differentiate this expression, okay, to find the gradient function. Set it equal to zero, which will tell you where the gradient is zero, which is where the, the graph turns. Okay, where it turns. And then you could um, find the value of x for which, that, for which it turns. And then substitute that back into here to find the value of y, which will be the, well, in this case, it will be the maximum point because it has a negative in front of the x squared. So we should know that because it has a minus in front of the x squared, it's going to be a maximum. So we know for sure that this thing will give us a maximum okay because it turns you, you, uh, you can say as a is negative less than zero therefore it's a maximum they didn't ask you actually ask us to um, give a reason but it's no harm if you do so you know it's gonna be like a frowny face opening downwards so that means it's going to be a maximum and we want to find the vertex well when we have the equation in this form minus 2 x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 25 over 2 well the vertex which is its maximum point in this case is going to always be basically minus 3 over 2 it's going to be always going to be the opposite of this number inside the bracket so it's going to be 3 over 2 and it will always be the same as the number outside the bracket for the y coordinate 25 over 2 okay, that's going to be the vertex now some people just memorize that it's always going to be the opposite of this for the x coordinate and the same as this for the y coordinate when it's a complete the square form which is fine however i prefer my students to understand okay the reason so i'll just quickly briefly go through it that if i rewrite this in the form 25 over 2 minus 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared um, what you realize is that what's inside this bracket here no matter what value x is no matter whether it's a positive or negative value in the end you'll square it and it'll always become positive so this bracket will always will never be negative basically will never become negative all right if it became negative then you'll have 25 over 2 minus 2 times something negative. You'll end up going, getting a 25 over 2 plus something, which will go bigger than this. But as this can never be negative, can never ever be negative because you're always squaring what it is, then it's always going to be minus 2 times something positive. So you'll always be taking something away from 25 over 2. So 25 over 2 is a maximum value that this expression can ever reach because you're always taking away something from it. Okay? The only time when you're not going to take anything away from it is when this bracket is equal to zero. 
When this bracket is equal to zero, you'll have 25 over two minus two times zero, which is 25 over two minus zero. So that means the biggest value this can ever take is 25 over two. That's why 25 over two is vertex. And when is it that it will be that value? It will be 25 over two when this bracket is zero. When does this bracket become zero? When x equals three over two, the opposite of this. Three over two minus three over two is zero. That's why three over two is the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so that's just the reason why the vertex is always the opposite of the what's inside the bracket for the x coordinate and the same as what's outside the bracket for the y coordinate when it's written in completing the square form. Okay, so there we have the answer to A part one and two. Okay, um, and now part B. It says sketch the curve C. So let's just take a few things from this side. We've got y equals minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. So I'll just write y equals minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. And we also have it's completed the square form, which was y equals minus 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared plus uh, 25 over 2. Okay, so this is like 1.5 here, and this is like 12.5, just so that we can scale it here. All right, so I know that it opens downwards. We already mentioned that. Okay, we know also that when x is 0, so we can say it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. When x equals 0, we see y is equal to um, 8. When x is 0, y is equal to 8. We're going to have here... 0 and 0, so y is equal to 8. So we know it crosses the y-axis at 8. We also know that it turns at 1.5 and 12, although we're not asked to write this, 12.5, sorry. We're not asked to show this, but just for our information, that's the vertex. It's going to have a maximum there. So it's going to go down, it's going to go like this. So the cur curve will look like this. I know for sure it must cross the x-axis somewhere on this side. And again, somewhere on this side whoops that's a bit too going out here I shouldn't you should try and be, you don't you don't it's not gonna have to be it's not that you have to be accurate but you have to um, try and show the sketch the way it's supposed to look which with this tool is not that good actually so all right so even this side shouldn't be so a bit more narrow like that one okay bear with me here Okay, so let me just do a bit of a, yeah, that's better. Okay, so now, um, it says on your sketch, show clearly the coordinates of any points, of the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses or meets the coordinate axis. So we've done that for, the, for this. I need to find now these two points. I need to find the coordinates of these two points. Okay, so what I need to do is, I need to basically find when this equals zero. So what I could do is, I could basically, I've got to find, I know that these two points are on the uh, x-axis, and we know that on the x-axis, all right, on the x-axis, we know the value of y is always zero. All right, so what I can do here is I can just take my expression for, in completed the square form, I'll take my expression in completing the square form. Let me just move this out of the way. Okay, sorry about this. Okay, so I'm going to take my expression, y equals minus 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 25 over 2. And I'm going to make that equal to 0. It's probably easier for me to solve this rather than the other equation because this is in a form that makes it easy for us to solve. So you've got minus 2, x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 25 over 2, we know that that equals 0 on the x-axis. Okay, so we've got to find the values of x by solving this. So what we can do here is we can um, basically take this one to that side, which will basically make it 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared um, equals 25 over 2. It's like I've 
added this whole thing to both sides, so I get 25 over 2 equals 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared, which is the same as writing it this way. And then I can divide by 2, get rid of this 2, so I'm left with the square bracket on its own without anything associated with it. That gives, that gives me 25 over 4, because I've got to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of this 2. And then I can take the square root of both sides, so I have x minus 3 over 2 equals plus or minus 5 over 2. The square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 4 is 2. I've taken the square root of both sides. Okay, and then I can say x equals 3 over 2 plus or minus 5 over 2. So I can say either x is equal to 3 plus 5 over 2, which is 8 over 2, which is 4, or x is equal to 3 minus 5 over 2, which is minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1. So now I can say that this value is definitely minus 1. Let me write it up here. And this value is definitely 4. So now I have answered the question. It says, on your sketch, show clearly the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses or meets, meets the coordinate axis. Okay, so there we have it. As for the previous question, as I said, we could have differentiated this to find the turning point. But once you've completed the square, it's much easier to just read off the values from that.